important to the backstory. In this case, the backstory on a, a major addition to Longmont's economic environment and economic base, retail environment and economic base. This is your opportunity, Longmonters, to learn the backstory, the story behind the story on a decision of a major significant US corporation to expand a long line. Uh, this, is, this is gonna show up on a city council agenda on Tuesday, November 17th. And we're recording this in advance of that. And we'll get into the reasons why in just a few minutes. But this is a big story and one that we wanna make certain that all long miners have a chance to come along and, and learn all you need to learn about what's gonna be before the city council. My name's Tim Waters. And while I do wear a city council hat, in, in this setting, I'm a, a volunteer for Longmont Public Media. And as the moderator of the backstory, I have the, the good fortune of interviewing experts, elected officials, city officials, economic development experts, policymakers from time to time on topics of interest and relevance to Longmonters. This is a big topic of real interest and relevance to Longmonters, and I've got a great panel for this interview. Harold Dominguez, uh, city manager, and has been city manager since Harold, what, 2012? 2012. Mayor Ryan Bagley um, in his second term. Jessica Erickson, who is the president and CEO of the Longmont Economic Development Partnership. Dale Rodemaker, who is the deputy city manager, and Jim Golden, who everyone knows as Longmont's long serving chief financial officer. So thanks to the five of you for, for clearing your schedules to be part of this conversation. And I want to start um, just by clarifying that we're, that we're recording prior to the council meeting, which is unusual, but we want to make certain that this story is available to the public at the same time council materials are available. So there's some risk in doing that because it's something council could decide to do something different than what we're reporting here today. But I'd like Mayor Bagley for you to start with why is it we would be confident enough in in what's gonna be in front of the council to start telling the story in the days prior to the council meeting? Well, first of all, because uh, even though we haven't made a public decision, there have been private discussions among council um, about this economic development opportunity. It started well over a year ago when, and I know we talked a little bit about, about whether or not we should, we should share this, but it started over a year ago when there was, a, there was an original location in Longmont where uh, the developers mistakenly thought that that was the only location that was available for Costco. And so knowing the importance of this uh, specific retail location um, or the, this, this, this specific retailer, they approached uh, the city, city staff and, and city council and basically we're saying we want economic incentives. Uh, I think the, the cost was immense. Um, close to somewhere between 18 and 20 million. And uh, uh, at that time, uh, we were concerned because A, it seemed like a lot of money, but the strategic significance of Costco coming to Longmont cannot be overstated uh, because the other location they were looking at was Frederick off I-25. And if they were to have built Costco out there in Frederick, what that meant was our retail corridor, rather than becoming an epicenter, which it would become with Costco, it now would be cut off had it been located in Firestone. Our Sam's Club would have been hurt. Our retail stores would have been hurt. Our downtown would have been hurt. So it's not about whether or not we allow Costco to come or not. It was coming. The question, mm -hmm. the question is, was, would, what is Longmont or was Longmont going to be able to participate in the tax revenue? And so um, at that time, we tried to negotiate with those particular group of developers. Um, and when it became apparent that we A, needed to have Costco in order to survive, or, and B, um, it became apparent that this location was not going to work, uh, we then set our sights to finding a second location, which at the time, uh, many thought were impossible, but thanks to the hard work of uh, people like Jessica Eric Erickson and, and Jim Golden and Dale Rodemaker and Harold Dominguez, the people you see on this, this uh, backstory, um, we were able to uh, speak to uh, uh, the Goldman family and uh, uh, they were able to find a location over there on 119 
just to the uh, just in the uh, eastern portion of Longmont, uh, the eastern portion of Longmont, and we were able to come to terms that allowed us to uh, come to an agreement with Costco that was vastly cheaper for the city, um, had far less risk, and allowed us to solidify the agreement with Costco, the corporation that led to hopefully what will be the city council approving the partnership. And again, um, we've had executive sessions. We didn't vote, but we certainly were able to speak our minds. And I have not seen a vote, but I have not heard any, any council member voice any opposition to this. So, so just, to, just to drill down on one aspect of what you just said. Yeah. Over the arc of time, as this opportunity has been under consideration, <clears throat> Uh, the city council, and, the, and really brought to the council by the staff, has entertained proposals with various costs associated with them uh, as incentives to put together a deal with Costco. Right. And the, the, the ultimate, and we'll get to what the ultimate uh, package looks like in just a minute. Um, what, I, what, I, what I know is, because I've had those conversations, but what I've heard you say is, the ultimate cost that city's investment here is substantially less at the end of a year of negotiations than it might have been had this been a deal closed quickly a year ago. Absolutely, it, it's, it's immensely cheaper. And uh, there's clawbacks in it, which I'm sure that our city yeah, staff yeah, can mention. Yeah. Um, and there's also, you also have to look at, okay, well, how much are we anticipating <clears throat> in sales tax receipts um, versus um, how much the incentive package is. Yeah. And we'll get to all those details here as we go through this conversation. But thanks for getting this started. Jessica, you have been, you're the pro here in terms of economic development. You've been in these conversations repeatedly over, in not just in this community, in multiple communities. So um, from your perspective, that of an economic development expert, why should Longmont as a city and Longmont residents care about Costco's decision uh, to come to and invest in Longmont? Um, yeah, happy to answer that question, but if I may respectfully clarify something that um, Mayor Bagley alluded to, which was the initial uh, kind of incentive package that was being looked at at the original site, uh, because I think it's a distinction that will be important to uh, Longmont residents that it was not Costco seeking 18 to $20 million in order for them to come here. Uh, they had uh, and they have um, an amount in mind that works for them to pencil a project in any community. And they look to the community to uh, basically come to the table to help them get to that from a land price and, and um, uh, cost of building the project in that community perspective. So it wasn't Costco trying to um, uh, get 18 to $20 million out of the city. They were just trying to um, pencil their project uh, to meet their pro forma. So yeah, those costs had more to do with the property owners and the deal they right. needed, yeah. and infrastructure costs, and all that was related to this. Costco's been pretty consistent, really. In terms of yep, they yeah they've money. been consistent from this is where we need to be, uh, whatever it takes uh, to get there. And so I think where we ended up, as has also been uh, suggested, is a much better deal for the city as well. Uh, but to answer your question about the importance of, of Costco as an economic development project for the city, um, this is a bit unique in terms of, and, and the mayor spoke to this a little bit, in terms of not only looking at from, are we going to incentivize this project based on what we gain as a community, but also based on what we have the potential to lose as a community, uh, because they were going to go somewhere that um, either in Longmont or just outside of Longmont that would have had the same impacts on um, traffic and some of the other things that um, might be seen as negatives about the project without the benefit of uh, the significant fiscal and economic impacts that a project, a Costco project brings to a community. It, it wouldn't be unusual. Is it, is it, is it fair to say that uh, a corporation like Costco, a large retailer, any large retailer, uh, deciding that there's a region a general area in which they want to locate, uh, would consider multiple options. Mm -hmm. They might have options A through B, C, D, um, and and would not resolve or, or decide finally on one of those without considering considering all the possibilities. Um, so so 
if those if, if positions or locations B, C, and D are outside of Longmont, we are then competing with other communities. If indeed we want this asset in our community. Absolutely. Yeah. And in this case, like I said, both competing for that what we had the potential to gain and um, competing to not lose what we would have the potential to lose. And yes, any project of this size and scope is going to have multiple options available to it and um, go a certain distance with every single one of those options, um, kind of deselecting some of those as they go along as others rise to the top. Um, I, I won't speak for Costco, but in my experience, and I've been doing this for quite a long time, uh, they likely still have a plan B on, on the table. So until, um, yeah, until the things are signed and there's a shovel in the ground, um, they will likely still have an alternative plan B. So they're, they're, they're in our some risks, which we're gonna to come to in just a minute and I'm gonna ask Dale to talk about those. But before I do that, I'm gonna to turn to Harold. Uh, Harold, as city manager, uh, you've been in these conversations over a period of years. Opportunities that rise and fall, big and small. Um, uh, and there's always a commentary, right? That was a win or, or not, or how big a win was it for the community? From your perspective as city manager, why should Longmonters care about this? What's the, uh, what's the significance, uh, both in terms of the economics, but the timing of this decision and what it means to Longmont, both short-term and long-term? Um, so a couple of things. I think one, when you start evaluating the fact that they were looking in this general area, I think that A, says a lot about um, Longmont, where we stand in, in the broader world of economic development and how people are looking at our community. So this, um, and we've had conversations with them about this, this ties to other decisions that council have, has made on the economic development front, whether it's Smuckers or whether it's Avexus, but then also some of the other um, businesses that we We've worked with in our community. So they're in tune to that. They're in tune to rooftops. They're in tune to our sales tax performance. And so they know what we do. And to Jessica's point, I think, so they were looking at this broader geographic area to say, we're interested in this, but they weren't beholden to Longmont within our city limits. And to be frank, you see us all touching on this. Um, they very well could have just located just outside of Longmont city limits. And we've heard different things through different pieces of intel. That could have been an option. Up to the intersection of the interstate in, in 119, where you see American Furniture and some of those other locations. Because if you really look at where they typically go, yeah. they're typically on interstates, US 36, major highways. And so that was something that we had to take into account. So the fact that they were interested says a lot about where we are as a community. I think the other thing that's really important about this is that it also really helps redefine our retail trade area. There's not a lot of businesses today that you would really go, we need to go after this, especially in the retail world, um, because we all know how it's operating. But when you look at redefining a retail trade area, that's what Costco does. They are a destination retailer. And so for us, that is a huge, that makes a huge impact to our community um, and it brings people in. And so that then starts helping the other businesses that were then, are within Longmont as well. So that was a big piece of our conversation. Obviously, Jim will talk about the economics on this and, but I can't um, understate it enough. Um, a lot of times when you look at this, you go, you can win. And if you win, you get this. There is another component into this conversation and you've heard us all touch on this. If it doesn't go to Longmont and it goes just east of us, we actually stand to lose a lot in this conversation. And that's really for me, one of the first times in my career where it's not just what you can gain, it's really evaluating what you can potentially lose in this if you don't get them to locate in our community. So those, that's a big piece. And then generally what I will say is, I think it does say a lot about Longmont and where we are today and the confidence that um, Costco, which is one of the best performing um, retailers in, in the world and how they feel about Longmont. So I think that says a lot about our community. And I think it really positions us for other retail opportunities in the future, even in a world that's somewhat chaotic. 
Uh, so was it Ross Perot who back in that presidential campaign talked about that big sucking sound you hear? Was somebody's tax money being yeah. sucked up? Mm -hmm. In this case, that big sucking sound would have been Costco just outside the Longmont city limits, sucking the sales tax resources out of Longmont, right? Into another municipality. Yeah, and, and if I can add to that, I think it's really important. So, you know, we're in a time right now in, in this COVID-19 world um, where we've done, you know, as we, if we look at how we're performing versus other communities, um, you know, we've done better than we projected. Uh, but it's related to businesses like Costco. And so if you didn't have that and you had people traveling to those locations, then it just starts exacerbating, you know, the different issues you have to deal with. And, and so that's for us why it's important. We know people travel to Costco and you'll hear Jim talk about leakage. It's a big, piece, I know that's it's a true big part of our conversation. Yeah, we, we, it is a destination for Tim and Jamie Waters as we, as we <laughs> ride to Costco. Uh, Harold, uh, can you talk about uh, the location, where in Longmont we're gonna see this? And, um, and I know there's, there's more involved in land acquisition yeah. just the site for Costco. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I can. And, um, and I will point out that, so I, start, I started on the front end of this conversation with Jessica. And then as our world changed, um, Jim, Dale, Dale's really, Jim and Dale have assumed the bulk of this with Eugene. Um, so they can jump in on this, but- Eugene May, our city attorney. Yeah. Eugene May, our city attorney. But I wanna kind of go back a little bit. So we all know about this other location. Um, and I think this point, um, we really have to emphasize it as well. Um, we were really in some ways trying to identify any possible location we could just to keep Costco and Longmont. And it was, and I've got to thank Reggie Golden because A, he took a call from me. Um, and at the end of the day, when we were, we showed him multiple locations. And at the end of the day, they go, this is the one we like. Um, and for Reggie to jump in when he did and move as fast as he did in partnership on this, Without that community connection and, you know, their, their long-term community connection, I don't know if we're having this conversation. Um, so I've really got to reinforce that piece. So it is just east of Harvest Junction. But what was also good about the conversation is we were trying to really work the broader financial package. Um, Reggie began talking to me about his interest in providing affordable housing opportunities um, in Longmont and something that he was interested in. And, and that actually led to us also purchasing nine acres of property um, with our affordable housing fund for affordable housing in our community. And, and that was um, in terms of the price for land, that was actually a really good price for affordable housing. And so we were excited about that. Obviously it was part of making the whole deal work but the fact that you can do something like this and bring a Costco in and get nine acres of affordable housing um, is a pretty big deal for our community. The other thing that's really important is we know that there was a lot of consternation about the mining occurring immediately adjacent to some neighborhoods. This actually also pushes that mining further east and we have a buffer between, um, we, we have more of a land buffer between where the mining will occur in those neighborhoods. And is it because I've been in this conversation with you, I, 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 I know the answer to the question, but I'm going to ask it. Uh, that nine acres, which would be south of the Costco site, um, it is potentially a site that the city could sell for multiples of what it paid and use whatever those proceeds are to build or invest in affordable housing elsewhere in the city. I mean, we'll have both of those options, right? Yeah, we have a number of options on the affordable housing front. I'll let Dale kind of jump in on this one because he's been more active in that conversation um, right, over the last few months. Let's, let's then let's invite Dale into this conversation. Dale, you've been in the middle. You and Jim really been in the middle of these negotiations for almost a year. Um, uh, and, and as you go through these, there are agreements that get made. There are concessions that get made. Uh, the corporation is going to do what it needs to to protect its interests. Your task is to protect the city's interest and keep the, the deal moving forward. So what can you share about kind of the background information on those negotiations over the last year? Um, and, and what risks 
uh, might the city be subjected to and, and how do you mitigate those risks? How will you mitigate those risks in the contract that the council is gonna have a chance to consider? Well, sure. Um, I'll, I'll start with just the, uh, the initial premise of, of bringing the parties together. So between um, the landowner, uh, the Golden family, uh, Costco as the company and the city as the partner. This has really been sort of a three-way um, uh, negotiation. Um, the good thing about that is each of those parties um, can see a, a, a reason to be part of this and, and, a, and a benefit that's involved. And I, I think the, um, the other thing I would say is that in working bo both with the property owner as well as with Costco, um, there have been few if any surprises along the way. In other words, we had initial discussions, we set the initial framework of, of, of what each party was sort of willing to, to bring to the table and people have held with that. Now there's obviously nuances and things that we've had to uh, uh, negotiate through, but at the end of the day, um, in, in my impression is that we've been working with um, people with really uh, good integrity and, and, and people whose, whose word uh, in these days still means something, um, uh, even before the attorneys all got involved. So um, I find that refreshing just to be able to uh, have, have a relationship whereby if you give your word in a discussion, um, you, you can know that they're not gonna turn on you, um, you know, when, when something gets a little tight or something. So I'll start out with that. Um, the other thing I'll say is that the, as Harold was mentioning, the city had multiple objectives that we were wanting to accomplish in this, uh, in this um, um, arrangement. Uh, first and foremost, of course, getting Costco to Longmont and, and frankly, getting them to open here in Longmont as soon as we can. That, that's our first and foremost issue. Um, you know, right behind that was certainly a desire of the community to try to also um, advance our uh, affordable housing uh, opportunities and needs. And as you um, appropriately noted, the city mm -hmm. has, uh, you know, the full um, ability to do with those nine acres as they believe to be most useful um, in, in their pursuit of affordable housing in the community. Um, Harold also mentioned the, uh, the shifting of the impact of some of the mining. You know, we were, we were certainly hearing that from some of the residential neighborhoods close in. Uh, of concern about mining, and that's a very reasonable thing. Uh, when you when you move to your new house, uh, you, you you're not really anticipating a gravel mine uh, uh, on the other side of your fence, and so also being able to shift that over has been helpful. So, you know, aggregate industries is a uh, another uh, party to the overall arrangement of what we're uh, working to resolve, in that they hold the gravel lease on the property and. As part of this overall process, we needed to also keep aggregate industries whole uh, because what was essentially happening with development of the property is you're removing it from gravel mining and that's a loss of resource for, for aggregate. Um, so again, that was part of the negotiation. You know, whenever we come to the tables of the city um, uh, with public dollars, we have to be very cautious, very conservative, and I rely on, you know, Jim is great at, at making sure we're, we're uh, uh, um, being very cautious with expenditures of city dollars. Um, in this case, the city's probably largest expenditures are the, uh, some of the uh, costs to provide the land, um, both for Costco as well as for um, the affordable housing. So those 26 acres of ground, um, the city, um, by, by coming to sort of be in control of those 26 acres, we then are also now sharing in the pro rata costs of the, of the public improvements that are gonna be necessary in order for this, uh, it's currently an alfalfa field, and for that alfalfa field to go from uh, its current condition to one that is ready to be developed. And so that's the, the design and construction of all the roads and utilities, uh, traffic lights and so forth. Um, so that has been an integral part of the negotiation as well, that the city is a, a partner by virtue of our percentage ownership of the overall, it's about 48.66 acres. Um, so 
we are um, very closely looking at and running our own estimates on the costs of those public improvements and offsetting those with some of the um, costs of the, the land that we're uh, also bringing uh, into the picture. So, you know, the city's financial investment is, is, is um, significant, but um, it also is one that is um, predominantly going into the um, pro rata share of those public improvements as well as uh, the property that's involved. Um, and in doing that, <clears throat> we had to also sort of backstop the city's risk. In other words, um, everybody hopes these projects go, go, go smoothly, right? They, they start, they get built, they, they have the ribbon cutting, yay, it's, it's, it's all a good day. Um, we spent a lot of time focusing on, well, what happens if it doesn't go so good, right? And so there are, there are about four different clawback scenarios uh, um, uh, embedded in the agreement. And they all tie to um, the level of infrastructure, for instance, that has been installed when things go south. Um, and so um, uh, at, at the end of the day, um, and in each of those scenarios, by the way, the city uh, is explicitly made whole in the event uh, that the Costco store does not open. Um, we even went so far as if you open your doors, but you don't stay open long enough for us to recoup, to fully recoup uh, through sales tax, our investment, that you will pay us back that difference as well. And so we tried to be very thoughtful as we were doing this negotiation and working through any number of different scenarios that can come up. And, and again, uh, from the city's perspective, looking to protect our investment, um, at, at, obviously to the best that we can. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, um, this, this has the potential to really be a showcase development for the city. Uh, on our entrance coming in from the east, um, I, I, I think it's gonna be impressive. Uh, I, I think the community is going to look at that and be very proud of it. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, uh, I'm looking forward to this, the integration of this new development within the larger Harvest Junction uh, retail, as well as the, the residential development to the south. Um, so I won't belabor all the details on the clawbacks, but that was the, that was the premise. That was uh, the goal, was if things go south, now what happens? How, do, how can we best uh, secure uh, the city's investment uh, so as to protect those public dollars? So um, at the end of the day, there's an investment on which we hope to get a return. I'm gonna to turn to Jim in just a second. Um, but, but we've negotiated into the contract protections for the city. Yes. So that while we, it's gonna take time to, to earn the return, um, we're, not, we're really not exposed for the cost to the city for infrastructure and, and the preparation of that site. Is that fair? That, that's, uh, I would say that's a fair statement. And in addition to the clawbacks that we have in, in, the, in the P3 agreement, uh, when we get to the stage of issuing the public improvement agreements, we're also gonna have additional securities that will be um, issued uh, once again as, as an additional backup um, to the city. So um, I look at this as one that we probably have as much protection on this project as we as we uh, likely do any capital project that the city goes out and, and uh, to build. And we, you, you made reference to 48 plus acres uh, and you made reference to Harvest Junction, but we haven't been explicit about where this will, where this development will occur. South of 119, east of yes. the housing development on the east side of Harvest Junction, south of 119. Yeah, the 48 acres, it abuts up against um, um, Ken Pratt Boulevard, State Highway 119 on the north. Um, it abuts up on the west to both the Harvest Junction retail as well as the Harvest Junction residential areas and um, extends to the, to the, to the east. Um, um, I don't know the exact distance, but uh, it's to an area that uh, uh, is a natural location for the stoplight to be uh, installed 
on Ken Pratt Boulevard, which is also a constraint that we're working around because there is an access control plan on that highway. And there's only certain points where, where we are allowed to get access to the highway. And so that defined at some level, the Eastern edge of the, uh, the project and the main access road into the development off of the highway. All right, very good. Jim, uh, we made reference to investments and you know, kind of broad statements about, about costs and, and returns on investment. Let's drill down on some of the numbers. Um, people will be curious how big the investment, we heard numbers earlier from, from the mayor and from Jessica. Um, what kind of investment is the city making? What have you forecasted in terms of, re, uh, in terms of sales tax receipts? Um, uh, what's the, over the arc of time, what does it look like in terms of returns on that investment and what does it mean to the city long term? Sure. Um, first, let me clarify a couple of things first that, first of all, um, no relation to the owners <laughs> at the developer, I should say. But, we should have pointed uh, that out. Second thing, uh, and I've really not been involved in negotiations like uh, Dale and, and Eugene have. They really deserve all the credit. They sure have put in a lot of time over the last oh, forever, it seems like. Yeah. But uh, for the numbers, so the investment in the project, uh, the total project that we've we've referred to here, including the affordable housing piece, is twelve and a half million dollars. Uh, that's the investment for the city. Of that amount, though, two point nine million dollars is for the affordable housing portion of it. So nine point six million dollars is for the Costco project and what's related to to having that uh, be accomplished. Uh, We've made estimates of the amount of revenue that can be generated by this development. Costco has provided us with their estimate of a first year uh, facilities sales tax uh, per square footage. And so based on that, we are projecting that the facility would generate $4.06 million in the first full year of operations. Now Costco, they use some pretty aggressive growth projections after year one. And as if you know me, I don't like to uh, get too optimistic with that. And so I'm a little bit more conservative. So we, we've used 2% growth projections after the first year. Uh, and I will tell you that the Costco is, is, is telling us it could be as high as 10% in the second year and, if, and for the first few years afterwards. But I, all of our projections we're using is based on a 2% growth. Um, over 20 years, that would generate $98.6 million of sales tax revenue to the city at its current uh, rate of 3.58%. Um, so um, property tax on this is, is uh, also going to be generated. It's not certainly nowhere in the neighborhood of, of what we're talking about in sales tax, but uh, the city would probably get, um, my estimate is around $60,000 per year. Should also point out though as well that, that it'll generate um, about a quarter million dollars for the school district and $100,000 or so for, for Boulder County. Um, so at the rate um, that, that we're projecting at the $4.06 million per year, 2% growth, we would recover that $9.5 uh, uh, or $6 million in less than two and a third years. And that's just uh, the, the gross revenue, sales tax revenue that would be generated. Now we do realize that not all the sales tax that's gonna be generated by the Costco will be new to the city. Uh, we do project that there'll be cannibalization, which would be the loss of existing sales in existing groceries or discount stores that already exist in the city. We're projecting that to be about 26% of the sales tax generated by the Costco. So we are really looking at a, a net sales tax and when we're trying to um, identify the benefit to the city. And that's still that net sales tax projects to a total net sales tax revenue of at least $73 million over 20 years. That's your conservative estimate. <laughs> that's at my 2% growth yeah, estimate, that's, that's correct. And, um, and I, I won't even ask you to, comment on the, the, the projection, the, the, the projections or forecast that Costco does, because it's way north of that $73 million I know. 
Uh, yeah, but I so would point out, I would point out though that that even though that that would also probably increase my cannibalization estimate as well. So I think that these are still realistic estimates. Um, and the and the and I want to reiterate the return on investment. We've been we recovered that 9.6 million. Did you say in less than three years? Yeah, two and a third years, we would get at least that much sales tax revenue within that period of time. And at, at their projections, probably less than two years. So um, I'm gonna come back to Jessica. Um, there will be residents when they read about this in the newspaper and, and which they'll, they will do soon. And uh, they'll listen to this presentation or listen to the council meeting. There'll be plenty of folks who will be critical of the city of Longmont once again uh, providing some kind of financial incentive to a major U.S. corporation to expand to long run. Why is it that municipalities, why, sh why is it this municipality would participate in that whole process, scenario of, of making incentives available? Why, why do we do it? What are the implications if we don't do it? Yeah. So thank you for that question. Um, I think it would probably come as a surprise to many that People in my position and most economic development professionals are not huge fans of incentives ourselves. Uh, we prefer the idea of as a community uh, for economic development projects and economic development investment to be able to compete on the merits of our community because we have the right infrastructure, the right talent, the right culture and quality of life for a company to make that kind of investment in our community. But there are times that um, an investment, and I'm glad we've been referring to it as an investment, an investment in a project on behalf of the municipality just makes sense because of the potential for return and the potential to mitigate, in this case, loss to the community. And we look at it from the perspective of not just those direct fiscal impacts that Jim has talked about, which uh, hopefully people understand um, how uh, impactful that will be to um, to the fiscal health of our community. But we also look at the economic impacts. So economic impacts are job creation and wages, and then the induced, induced and indirect benefits of the, that job creation and wages. And so we look at a company like Costco and at the types of jobs that they're creating, the wages that they're paying, the benefits that they're providing, and how, how those spread throughout the community into places like our downtown, into places like our other retail and, and service areas uh, in the community. And um, the return on this investment is undeniable. And both from a fiscal and economic perspective, Costco pays well above average wages for the types of jobs that they hire. They're actually in the neighborhood of average annual, citywide average annual wages uh, when you get into um, employees that they've had for a number of years um, on their payroll. They're a company that promotes uh, from within and um, is very focused on creating opportunities for all of its employees within its organization, not just in the local store that somebody might start in, but throughout the corporation. Um, they're a company that invests heavily in benefits for every single employee on their staff. Um, and um, they're gonna be creating 200 jobs. So we typically look at, um, at a company like Costco, a retailer like Costco is more of a locally serving business, which has uh, significantly less of a multi multiplier effect than what we would see from a primary industry employer, like a manufacturer or technology company. Uh, but in the case of Costco, because of the wages that they pay and because of the trade area um, that they create, uh, they act from an economic perspective more like a primary industry employer. And so both from that direct fiscal impact perspective that Jim talked about, as well as the broader economic impact potential for our community, and then add to that potential, the potential loss to our community if they were to relocate in particular, just on the other side of the county line. Um, again, it's a no brainer for the city of Longmont to make this investment in this company at this time. And I don't wanna put you on the spot, uh, but I know you calculate multiples when mm -hmm. you do these analyses. Have you done that on this one by any chance? I have. <laughs> I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's um, near a 2x multiplier, which again is something that we would typically see 1.9 something on, um, on jobs and I think 1.7 something on wages, which is 
uh, is something that we would more likely see um, with a primary, primary, sorry, primary industry employer. To, to translate what 1.7 or 1.9 means in terms of economic impact. Yeah, so a 1.9 multiply, jobs multiplier means that for every job that Costco creates, there will actually be 1.9 jobs created in our community. A 1.7 wage uh, multiplier means that for every dollar that Costco pays in wages, there will be um, one point a dollar and seventy cents in wages generated throughout the community. So, in addition to what Jim talked about, just the the benefits to the city as well as to consumers, in terms of the overall economic impact in the in the larger community, this is pretty substantial. It is absolutely. So, Mayor Bagley, <clears throat> that sounds like good news. Um, uh, we're going to hear a lot. I, we're going to hear some, I suspect, about the bad news. And you, and you made reference to some of this earlier, traffic and uh, more activity, more people, more traffic on 119 coming across town. Um, what say you to, the, to, the, to our friends and neighbors, um, those whose interests we protect, uh, why this remains a good idea, a sound investment for long run? Uh, it, it's a sound investment because it will continue continue to provide jobs and opportunities for people who live in Longmont. Um, it will provide a source of employment. It will provide a source of sales tax revenue. It will provide something to do on the weekend to go shop with your kids at Walmart, or I'm sorry, at Costco, in, in addition to Walmart and Sam's Club. But um, and anytime you develop anything, there will be more traffic and more people. And I would like nothing more than wave a magic wand and go back in time to when Longmont had 60,000 people. And when I moved in, I could have just closed the door behind me and said, that's it, no more. But unfortunately, Longmont and Northern Colorado and Colorado in general is a beautiful place to live. And people are coming. They need food, they need clothing, they need stores. And so unfortunately, we can't lock the door. And in order to continue Longmont's ability to uh, generate sales tax to be able to fill our potholes, uh, install our traffic lights, pay our police officers, and uh, just make sure that our city gets paid and continues to progress and prosper. We need to continue looking for economic opportunities and development such as this so we can move forward into the future uh, comfortably, happily, and united. And I would be very upset. Uh, the one question that was posed to city council, and so I might as well put this now, we had on three different occasions uh, asked members of the city council, if you have any doubts or pushback, or if you are opposed to this, speak now, because we are going to be going through a lot of effort, a lot of expense, a lot of stress. Um, there's a lot of people relying on this and not, not to mention our reputation in the development community with Costco um, and the landowner. Uh, but if we say no now, no one has opposed this. And so I will be very curious to see how this vote goes. Oh, we won't have long to wait to see how that vote goes. Carol, I want to give you one more chance to put an exclamation point on this in two ways. Um, uh, you made reference to uh, the commentary this makes about Longmont from a corporate perspective, in a, especially in a time where there's probably more economic uncertainty than ever. I mean, given, given what we've been managing with this pandemic. Um, go back to that just for a moment. Say, repeat or expand on what's, what, it, what does this say about Longmont, number one? And then number two, what should people know about timing? Uh, if, if the council approves this on Tuesday night, which the mayor is confident they are, and I would join you, Mayor Bagley, in that confidence. Uh, what should people expect to see over what period of time? So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna answer the first question and then add some information to the to this. And then I gotta turn it over to Dale for timing um, because um, again, a lot of work recently on, on all of those issues. So, you know, what was interesting is we actually started this conversation obviously before the pandemic hit. And there was concern when we started moving into this world of what does it mean to this project? Or, you know, is everyone still committed to this? Are we still moving forward? And the answer was yes, obviously. Um, we're still moving in this direction. 
And so I think that really says a lot about our community and, and their confidence in the retail trade area that they've identified. To touch on something that uh, um, you and Mayor Bagley talked about when we talk about traffic and these types of issues. Um, that's one of the reasons we actually like this location because it is further to the east. You don't necessarily have all of that traffic moving deeper through the community. But the other side of it is obviously the retail trade area is pretty big. And so you can guess what they're looking at. And if they move east of Longmont, we're still probably going to have a lot of that traffic moving through our community. We just don't have the revenue coming in. So that's another piece of the conversation. But one of the things I want to bring up is I think I would be remiss if I didn't talk about how this is how Costco operates. And what we're going through is not any different than what other communities go through when Costco wants to locate in their communities. And so when this started, I started doing some research and came across, oh, City of Dallas had to have a similar agreement. Um, I can't remember if it was Jim, Dale, or Eugene that provided me with a presentation. Actually, we knew there was another location being considered within uh, the Front Range, and there was an action taken by uh, the City of Denver. And the City of Denver actually had a very similar agreement to the agreement that we've put together. And specifically, and this will be included in the Council Com. Uh, the city of Denver improved an incentive agreement for development in Northeast Denver called the Flyway. Um, and that includes a Costco warehouse. Um, in that agreement, Denver committed to share back 9.5 million of sales tax from that facility. So when you look at the numbers Jim just talked to you about and said ours is 9.6, and you look at Denver doing 9.5, um, I think that also says a lot about our community because, you know, larger population base, more home, more rooftops, those types of things. And actually the deal's pretty similar in terms of what Denver put together and what we put together. And I wanted to point that out because I think that gives a framework of, it's not just Longmont, it's Denver, it's other large communities throughout the nation that all go through the same process because Costco is one of the most highly desired retailers in any community. And I would look to Jessica and others to say if I'm wrong on that statement. It's a pretty powerful statement of confidence in Longmont yeah. uh, from, from a major American corporation. I can, I, 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 I'd like to add to um, uh, Harold's statements there. I think the, um, you know, the city's um, uh, um, deal that, that we've been able to pull together not only gets the Costco project here uh, for a similar amount of money, but it also opens up for additional retail uh, and other development, the balance of the 48 acres. And so we are um, uh, coming forth with a similar amount of money for a much larger uh, uh, potential uh, development area that also includes, as, as we mentioned, the affordable housing as well as additional housing on the south side. And so. Um, multiple benefits coming in. And I think the other thing that made Longmont a strong um, uh, candidate for Costco um, it, it, it is some of our, our very core services that we provide. Um, things like our water and our sewer and our power and Nextlight, those are all very attractive to a corporation like Costco. They understand that value. They certainly understand what they pay for water and, and water taps in other communities um, as opposed to here in Longmont. And so all of that comes together in, in sort of the overall package um, uh, that really helps us to compete and, and to um, you know, be able to pull together these kinds of uh, um, um, deals where, where, where we're able to bring this kind of a, a retailer into the, into the community. Well, Dale, I want you to talk about timeline, but before you do, um, does anybody in, in this conversation want to speculate about the other kinds of development that Costco typically <laughs> uh, stimulates around Costco's? No? No one wants to speculate? Okay. Well, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I, well, will, I, say think you, I will say to viewers of this program, stay tuned, because Costco typically draws other kinds of 
of, of, of development around Costco's that most people would like to see. Dale, tell us about timelines. So the timelines, um, again, uh, if the council moves forward with um, uh, this item on first reading and then it will come back for second reading because it is in the form of an ordinance uh, on December 1st, that then will initiate the, um, the public land review process. Um, and there are a number of land entitlement processes that the 48 acres uh, will go through. Everything from a comprehensive plan amendment to an amendment of the PUD for the mining plan, uh, and then ultimately ending up with the platting uh, and final platting of the property. That is all expected to be about a six to seven month time period. And so we would fast forward now into about say July or so of 21. At that point, uh, we're, we are anticipating to go to closing uh, because at that point you'll actually have platted legal lots that can be uh, you know, sold from, from one pro uh, owner to the next. Uh, we'll also have the, all the final designs done for all the public improvements. At closing, um, the parties will come together, we'll close, and, you know, a typical type of closing. Costco will then also initiate uh, what's called the notice of commencement to begin work. And, and that, well, begin work, begin the construction of the public improvements. Those we have timed out to be anywhere from a 12 to 18 month uh, timeline, uh, you know, depending on winter and depending on, you know, can you, are you able to keep working through the, uh, through the, the cold and, and, and snow seasons or not. Um, all ending with a, uh, our, 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 the goal that we have in mind is to have the uh, pad ready site uh, available to turn over to Costco uh, such that they are uh, in a position to open their store in what they refer to as their fiscal year 23. And that would be somewhere in the time frame of a, a um, mid-year, say uh, July to September of 2023. Um, the agreement uh, provides for them an additional year uh, in, in the event that there are delays and those types of things. But what we're being told at this point by Costco is um, they see this as a very attractive uh, uh, site. And um, I think they're as interested in getting their, uh, their warehouse opened as we are in making that possible. So that's the timeline. And um, a, a lot of work will happen between now and uh, ribbon cutting uh, for, the, for the warehouse. <laughs> so long miners are gonna wanna have their kids back in school by the fall of September 23. I hope so. <laughs> so let, let Costco know we'd like to buy our school supplies at Costco right. by, by August or September 2023. Listen, any other final thoughts, comments anybody in this group wants to make? Yeah, just one quick thing, Tim. Uh, this is the first time the council is going to be implementing some of the raw water policy, uh, both economic uh, incentive uh, options with our raw water policy, as well as implementing and, and, and utilizing the raw water policy for affordable housing. And so you're going to be acting on, on those particular issues as well. And it'll be the first time that we are implementing uh, those particular policies, again, for the benefit of both economic development and affordable housing in the community. Just a few moving parts to this one. Yes, just a few. All right. <laughs> If, Can I add? Oh, sorry. Go yes, ahead. Go ahead. Harold, Harold, you get the last word. Jessica, go ahead. Sure. So I just want to also add that the, um, you know, knock on wood that this ends in um, a successful ribbon cutting for a Costco warehouse here in Longmont. Uh, it really is a true testament to the work that we've done over the last several years to um, operate as a cohesive collective unit and pursuing these types of projects. I have worked in multiple communities. I've worked at the state level and never have I experienced um, a group, a, a, a diverse set of perspectives approaching a project and really working in lockstep with the same goal in mind and um, contributing each the expertise that each of us brings to the table and letting each other uh, contribute the ex expertise that the others bring to the table without uh, stepping on each other's feet. So it's just been, it was a really um, <clears throat> good process to be a part of with this group. And I'm excited uh, 
that we've finally gotten here. A good process. I'd say that's fairly remarkable what you just described. <laughs> and, and that is a positive commentary. Harold, I said you get last word. Actually, I'm going to have the last word. But before I make my closing comments, <laughs> uh, give you a chance to offer your last words. Yeah, I wanted to touch on what Jessica talked about. Really, the team that came together on this one to have this conversation um, was um, just great teamwork. People were moving in and out. You know, we were managing many things during this time. So for the folks that were on this, those that aren't, great teamwork. Um, I also wanted to say, I think, I've, you know, I've been through a number of these conversations and Dale touched on this earlier, all the partners, Costco, the property owner, really, you know, saying what you mean and meaning what you say um, was, um, you know, it was really there throughout this process. Um, and I wanna commend everyone in Costco for this because um, they're, great organization to deal with through these processes, even when you disagree with each other. Well, a lot of times. To... Go ahead, I'm go sorry. Ahead. And a lot of times, you know, we look at this, it's, it's, it's interesting to watch how we approach the conversations and we go through this. And, and at times I, I joked to the team about this, you know, Jim and I would be on different sides of this conversation and we would go back and forth on this, but you know, um, when Jim Golden comes to you, and says, we need to, to really find a way to make this happen because it's that impactful to the community. Um, for me, that then makes the conversation much easier um, because, because his perspective and his judgment um, just means a lot. And, and when he says that to you, it's like, okay, we all know what we need to do now. Um, and, and so I, I you know, we've kind of talked about the financials on this, but I really want to reinforce um, the perspective that Jim brought to this and how he brought clarity to me in terms of where we need to go. Um, and when your CFO does that, you need to listen. So you tell um, me as we're going through this. You're telling me Jim Golden is the EF Hutton of Longmont. <laughs> when he speaks, everybody listens. He was talking about when we were looking at $18 million. <laughs> Tim, I can yeah. barely remember that commercial. <laughs> yeah. Barely. Yeah, thanks. Well, that's a baby boomer thing. <laughs> it's just the old people in this conversation. Jessica doesn't even know what we're talking about. All right, folks, I want to say on behalf of, uh, of your residents, uh, having been one for 25 years, how much I appreciate not just the time you gave today, but what you do every day. Um, win or lose on this one. I just know how hard you work on behalf of Longmont residents selfless, selflessly, not selfishly, selflessly, day in and day out under right now, really unusual, difficult circumstances. So thanks to each of you for what you do every day. And thanks again for what you've done this afternoon. And we'll look forward to uh, back to school shopping or Christmas shopping uh, 2023, late 2023 in Costco. And, you can sh and we can, maybe we can share this link with Costco, let them know how much we appreciate uh, their role in this as partners. Longmonters, that is the backstory on Costco coming to Longmont. Thanks.